I get slightly less comfortable with the dancing in from a commercial break yeah. when, it, when, our ne- when our guest is a uh, gentleman of color. Yeah, I, I felt that I way at a wedding one time where I was kind of, I was, you know, I had been lubricated a little bit and I was dancing. Yeah, and, I yeah. fa- and then there was a black guy looking across the room and I could tell he was judging me. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> a lot of judgment. Uh, it's, it's a cultural thing. They're allowed to. We can't really do it. Also because... Frankly, I can't dance. So uh, our next guest, <laughs> in case you hadn't guessed it yet, yeah. uh, you can follow him on the Twitter, at Zuby Music. He is actually, he's, a, he's an English rapper, but he also does a lot of fitness work. He has a new uh, book out, Strong Advice, colon, I should specify. Strong Advice, colon, because sometimes that'll mess up yeah, the whole search. Do you know if you search Louder with Crowder on iTunes right now? I don't show up. Oh, well, I mean, Not that's the shadow. So Strong Advice, colon, Zuby's Guide to Fitness for Everybody. Uh, Mr. Zuby, thank you for being here, sir. All good, man. It's a pleasure. How are you? I am doing very well, thanks. So, like you said, you, you, you're a musician mainly. Now, how do you make that transition from musician to uh, fitness guru? Or is it just, you know, you, you uh, took some juice and went on Instagram or butt implants? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm all nat- natty. Lifetime natural. I can genuinely say that. I've been training for like, I've been training for longer than I've been rapping, to be honest with you. Okay. So, it's something that I've, I've been doing for a, a while, made a lot of progress in, something a lot of people have always asked me for advice for for years and years. And I thought, you know, why don't I make a make a book? Why don't I take all this knowledge I've gained over the years and put it together, p- teach people how to train, teach them how to diet, teach them all the basics, the fundamentals they know, strip out the nonsense and put it out there as an ebook. And yeah, it's uh, giving people good results already. It's only been out a couple of weeks. And one guy told me he's already lost uh, six pounds. So Awesome. I'm happy with that. Good for yeah. him. And obviously, so that, that leads us to, uh, that's a good segue into this next topic. We have a clip. Uh, having lifted for that long, I would imagine, is what helped you uh, shatter the uh, women's powerlifting <laughs> records, which you posted to Twitter and people were upset about. Here is you uh, accomplishing this feat. These chains, take a look at these racks. Look at these gains, take a look at these facts. If you want to know pain, take a look at these cracks. Think it's insane how I'm pushing And he breaks racks. it with a triple. Oh, ladies and gentlemen. So, oh, no, wait. No, it looks like he was kept going. So, was that, did you do four or five reps on that? Uh, what was that on the... the that was 180 deadlift? kilograms, I think. No, on the deadlift. Yeah, that's right. You can't oh, see. Oh, on the yeah. deadlift. Oh, the, the, the deadlift, the video that went viral was just a single rep. I could have done it for about six or seven. But, um, okay. it was, yeah, that wasn't my max. That was just to make sure I confidently smash the record. Right, okay. Uh, what inspired you to do this? This is the question. I mean, <laughs> I, at first when I had heard the story, I thought you went into a, a meet, you know, in a singlet okay. with a, some chicken cutlets kind of in your, in, your, uh, yeah, yeah. In, your, in your singlet. But then I saw, okay, he just broke it on Twitter, showing people that if he were a woman or identified as a woman, he could have broke, and you, you still got the outrage. So what was yeah. inspiring this? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, over the past couple of years, of course, I've seen this thing going on with people saying they're transgender, and it's always, a man, biological man, competing in a female sports. It's happened in MMA. It's happened in uh, athletics multiple times. It's happened in weightlifting, powerlifting. And I remember a couple of years ago, I was kind of privately sounding the alarm bells to people like, this is going to start becoming a mm-hmm. thing, you know? And people were like, no, nah, you're, you're being silly. No one's going to do that. And right. I was like, okay. And then this year, I mean, we're, on, we're not even, ha- even halfway through the year and there have been so many incidents of it, of it happening. But uh, the week I posted that, I'd, I'd seen several incidents of this happening. There had been the athletics thing in the U.S. where I think uh, two two boys won the girls' Yes, in the Northeast race. here, and the girls, yeah, in one track meet, yeah, two boys yeah. outpaced the girls significantly. It still oh. is one of the funniest pictures on the internet, though. It's Them just funny. pulling ahead, and the women just, <laughs> they're just straining, <laughs> leaning their chest forward, on it, and it's not even close, but no. yes. Yeah, yeah, so I saw that, and then um, out of interest, I just, out of curiosity, I just looked up the British female powerlifting records, and lo and behold, I saw I could beat all of them in my weight class. And I already had the vi- I already had the video on my phone. So I literally just tweeted it saying, look, I keep hearing people saying biological men have no advantage. So here's a bit of video of me beating the women's deadlift record. P.S. I identified as a woman. Don't be a bigot. Right. And so that was free yeah. content for you. You just had it laying around on your phone because you were trying to check your form. Next thing you know, it's an international incident. Yeah, th- that video had that video was already on the Internet and it had like 50 views. 
Right. And then, yeah, reposted in 1.5 million now. So <laughs> I think it was the caption that did it. Well, I, so a lot of people will say, well, you're clearly not a woman. It's very different from trans athletes. Actually, if you look at the Olympic rules, no, not really. You really only have to be undergoing some kind of hormone reassignment, uh, hormone um, replacement therapy for a year. And you don't have to have a sex change. The rules are very relaxed and even more so in a lot of these smaller niche sports like powerlifting. So um, did you expect this kind of reaction? Uh, I wish I could say I did. Some people were like, man, you're a marketing genius. Like, yeah, I was like, dude, I wish I, <laughs> I, was like, I, I wish I planned that. I knew that my followers would, would find it kind of funny. And I thought, yeah, it'll get a couple of retweets and likes, but I did not expect it to. I mean, I saw it going viral in the UK first. Then I saw it started getting re retweeted by big names out in the US and Canada and Australia. Next thing I knew, all these media, you know, BBC, Sky News, like everyone wanted to interview me and stuff. And I was just like, whoa, this has gone a lot further than I intended. I saw that it went on your website, uh, Joe Rogan, Tucker Carlson, Ben yeah. Shapiro. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it went way further than I ever imagined. Yeah, I can I, I can imagine. It's a, it's a weird experience. Let me ask you this, because I don't really know. How is the situation in the UK? As you said, it's been going on in the United States mm -hmm. for a while, but the transgender sports situation, is it as big of an issue? Is it kind of something that everyone's accepted wholesale? Or would you say that's an issue where maybe the United States is further to the left of uh, our, our UK brethren? That's a good question. There are some pretty prominent female athletes like um, Paula Radcliffe and, um, oh gosh, I'm forgetting some names now. Um, tennis player as well, Martina, okay, uh, who have been making quite a lot of noise for. I think some of them have lost their sponsorships uh, because people have called for boycotts because they stand against mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So you've got professional female athletes saying, "Wait, no, this is this is not good. This is a problem." And then people are labeling them as transphobic and trying to say that they're bigots and that they're trying to exclude people and whatnot. And so they're catching flack for their position. So when I posted that video, I actually received a ton of support, funnily enough, from a, <laughs> from a lot of individual mm -hmm. feminists and feminist groups who right. were praising me for standing up for women. Um, the following day, they found out I was pro-life. And so I, I lost like several hundred of them. <laughs> wow. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, it was it was interesting. But, you know, I, I'm glad that it made the point, you know, in a satirical way, not in a way that was aggressive or coming across as attacking anybody or anything like that. Well, it's pretty aggressive. Um, you were deadlifting 400 pounds for a few reps. I mean, most people would call that semi-aggressive. Uh, but, um, well, look, look, you know, it's funny that you mentioned that. One of the first debates we ever had in our show was I was moderating. This is back when it was just a terrestrial radio show and I had a camera on it, and it was uh, a lesbian and a trans person. And this lesbian who considered herself a feminist, this is the first time I'd ever experienced this. She was very upset because women's only spaces, and she'd been the victim of, of sexual assault, uh, this yeah. lesbian woman she was very upset with the trans person saying now we don't have women's only spaces and this is not the same to just sort of tag this all on to lgb now qaaip and uh or tqq8qa sorry i forget the acronym you get the yeah, point yeah. it's a tongue twister yeah, yeah. and uh i remember it was so tense in the studio i think a lot of people are surprised to hear that but there's quite a bit of division in the feminist community even the third wave feminist community over this issue yeah, there is. Um, I've, I spoke to a couple of women's rights ag advocates actually on my podcast, Real Talk with Zuby. Um, two of them who have been kicked off Twitter. Uh, you may have heard of Megan Murphy. Uh, yes. Um, yeah. Yeah, who got kicked off Twitter. Um, and then a British woman called Posey Parker who also got kicked off of Twitter, both for quite similar things. Right. Um, mis misgendering or for saying some critical stuff about how this stuff may affect women. And um, yeah, so it, it's... It's pretty weird. There was another woman I interviewed, uh, Caroline Farrow, who's a uh, British journalist who was investigated by the police for misgendering somebody. Now, this is so in the UK? This is in the UK yeah, as well, because you know we... Yeah. In the UK, wow. do police uh, shoot black uh, men just for sport? Um, not the last time I checked. Okay, because I don't know if you've heard. That's no. kind of here. It's almost... It's like duck hunt yeah, if you have yeah. melanin in your skin for that. <laughs> Um, so let me ask, <laughs> let me ask you this. Sorry, I always have to throw some incredible discomfort in a first time interview to make sure that when you come back, it's not yeah. surprising. You're, uh, you, you know, you obviously put this issue out in the trans issue so people can kind of guess where you line up on that. You just said pro-life. So pro-life, pro, I guess, sort of, we could say somewhat traditionalist when it comes to male, female roles in the UK as a rapper. Uh, yeah. how does that happen? <laughs> Look, man, I'm I'm just me. I'm just me. I, I like to joke that I haven't changed that much. The world has just shifted. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like 
10 years ago, six years ago, if you said that there were two genders, no one would look at you weirdly. Right. T- 10 years ago, if you said that sex and gender are the same thing, everyone's like, yeah, obviously. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, like my my views have not sort of radically shifted in any way. I'm just like the world's kind of gone a little bit nuts and some of us have just kind of stayed in the same place. Yeah. And as a result, you know, some of my views and whatnot are now considered somewhat I'm like, when it comes to rap, I'm like the least controversial rapper out there. I don't even use profanity, but because of my views and some of the stuff I put out on Twitter, I'm now seen as some quite polarizing. Well, that in itself is kind of controversial in rap. You know, a lot of people are like, <laughs> yeah. well, is that like by design that you're not using profanity? Because this is a part of the art form. I mean, that's that stands out more than if you did use more profanity. That That's true. I mean, I, I often joke that. You know, when I get like these mobs attacking me on Twitter, I often joke that of all the, of all the rappers in the world, you're coming after me. You're, <laughs> yeah. you're coming after the guy who raps about positivity and like uplifting stuff and, you know, trying to, you know, yeah. <laughs> put yeah. this out there. Whereas if I, you know, you're, someone's calling me being, uh, I say I'm pro-life and someone starts saying I hate women, I'm a, I'm a misogynist. And I'm like, you've literally got people rapping about like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, DMX oh, is trying to bring us together, right? Well, he's back in prison. Okay, he's back in prison right now. But you understand that he's ordained as a pastor. Um, so, how did you come to pro pro life? What's the background there? That's a good question, man. Um, it's one of those things I didn't really think about a lot for. I want to say like the first two and a half decades of my life. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a couple of a couple of years ago, just when I when I actually thought about it. Like I, I come, I came across something online. It may have been like some debate or some conversation on YouTube or something. And I just did a little bit of research properly for the first time about, you know, the, the, the whole process, like how it's actually done and the different stages of the human development cycle. Like I, I learned this back in school, obviously in biology, but right. there's so much obfuscation about the facts, right? Mm-hmm. Because yeah. the facts are not in favor they of the majority. They skim past position. it to give you a punch bowl full of condoms. They exactly. Have to get to the and, yeah. And, and, yeah, when I when I when I looked through it properly, I was like, you know, given my own personal beliefs and just my moral view, I cannot find any moral arguments in favor of this. Mm-hmm. I can find convenience ones, pragmatic ones, practical ones, moral ones. I can't find one, so I was like, therefore, no, I I can't stand for this. And then I'm you got like, you combine that with a deadlift video, and people get upset with you on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, they're, they're they're quite different issues, but yeah. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter to the to the angry feminist. Like, it's the cumulative. First off, you suggest that a, a men and women are biologically different, and then you suggest that we shouldn't have open abortion up until eight and a half months? Are you kidding me? Uh, final question. <laughs> Let me ask you this. What, what can people expect to, to find in your book, uh, your fitness book, Strong Advice, Zuby's Guide to fit, yeah. Fitness for Everybody? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So the, the tagline for it is um, a no-nonsense guide to building muscle, burning fat, and creating your best body ever. So it's Primarily aimed at beginners and intermediates. It's for people who want to build muscle, lose weight, um, burn fat, and who just want, who don't want to be bogged down with unnecessary, complicated information. Mm-hmm. Who just want to know what works and what doesn't work, what's what matters and what doesn't. Because I've been training for a long time, and there's so much info out there. I, I feel like people have too much information. So it's kind of like, look, just yeah. start from scratch. This is what you need to know do this and it'll work for and, you. And then you toss in a couple of weekend certified personal trainers into the mix and people are like, I don't know what to do. The guy had me doing <laughs> battle ropes and reverse squats and gravity boots. I, so I would imagine if you're showing dead, comp, heavy compound lifts are a big part of what you probably teach. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. And keeping the, keeping the diet simple, you know, how to calculate how many calories you need, whether you want to maintain, gain, lose, and yeah dispelling a lot of myths as well and it's it's very it's very straightforward it's like me like i wrote it in the same way i tweet it's just like concise very short bang 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 yeah a lot of people overcomplicate it and i think a lot of people overcomplicate it you know i think that's why physical uh, fitness or or weightlifting specifically um or really any kind of sport i would say um individual sport where you are incrementally improving and there's some form of self-measurement, you know what I mean, where there's actually some kind of PR that you're setting. Um, a lot of people are looking for a secret and the truth is it's, it's, it's not very complicated, but it is hard and it's not necessarily fun for a lot of people. And that's why they're looking for a trick. It's like, listen, you're just gonna, you're gonna start, you're gonna have to lift some heavy ass weights and, uh, yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's about yeah, it, it. It is, it is, and it, it doesn't matter if, it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman or non-binary, you just, do it and you keep on doing it and you will get results like it, it does work 
Right, it does, work. it does work. And one thing too, while we're just to make sure we dispel one of the most common myths, because I know a lot of women will be watching this, seeing you do that deadlift and say, I don't want to look like that. It is not the same. If you're a woman, you cannot put on that much muscle naturally. Mm. A lot of women wait, don't like wait, to lift wait, weights. Wait, hang on, hang on. I disprove this. Don't be a bigot. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> don't be a bigot. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it is true. A lot of women are afraid to do that too. Like, I'm going to get big. It's like, yeah. if, if you look at it, and you know this probably from it's when you started lifting. When I, yes, it, it is yeah. a pride swallowing <laughs> siege for a man to try and put on muscle. And women think, you know, if they look at a dumbbell, they're going to start growing the woody woodpecker biceps. It's like, no, no, no. That's not how this works. Trust me, you can do some physical training, diet properly. And uh, again, it's back to the basics. All right. That book is, I want to make sure I get the name right. Zuby's got strong advice. Zuby's Guide to Fitness from, uh, for Everybody at Zuby Music. People can check out uh, your stuff on YouTube. And uh, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check out some more of your music. I was more familiar with, uh, with your, your, your Twitter in these videos. So uh, we'll have you back and uh, we can talk about that more. Sounds good, bro. Thank you very much. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Stay gold. We have to go. We'll be back to wrap this ish. Yum, yum, yum.